All right, everybody. This is BJ from the 478. I greatly appreciate you tuning into my channel. And today I want to talk to you about a couple projects that I'm trying to complete because this one right here got caught up in between income tax season and it was slowly but surely I'm getting it done. So let's check out and see what's going on in here. Um, now I did a time lapse of when I was building the battery boxes and all that good stuff. Now I finally have this thing wired up. And what I got going on in here is I'm running a Sundown 6K, Salt 6K. I'm running a 2000 watt VFL on the, the mids in here. And then I'm running a, a 1000 um, VFL 4 channel. Let me see up in there on um, just the tweeters. So I'm running bass, mid range, and then an app for the tweeters as well. So as you can see, um, I have two sets of of zero gauge OFC T-spec wire running to this battery. I have two sets of zero gauge running to this distribution block here. And then I have your three um, hot gauge hot wire inputs into that distribution block. So what you're looking at is I had to come up with something to where I needed all these batteries and these banks to to serve a purpose. So I have a knot gauge running from the, the Ohio generator alternator I just put on. Um, I'm running a, a zero gauge T-spec wire here and it goes to this bank. Then I'm running a whole nother zero gauge. It's got its own, you know, wire all the way back up and back up through here all the way to this bank. Now, lo and behold, I had to hide some wire for this one because it was a little bit shorter, but they are the actual same length running all the way through the car. So I have two runs of zero gauge hot wire um, all the way through the rear of this vehicle. And then I have two runs of zero gauge running from each bank. Now, all my grounds coming out of here, they are grounded chassis grounds. So you have three grounds coming out of here. You have ground coming out of your your um, mids and highs, mids amp, then you have a ground coming out of your highs amp. So as you can see, those are running adjacent all the way here. And I'm gonna run chassis grounds. So when you're running chassis grounds, scrape the frame of the, the vehicle, you drill holes through, long story short. But these three wires right here are, from the actual base amp. And then you have these two here for the actual batteries. Each battery has its own ground wire. Likewise, on the other side, this bank of batteries right here, each one of those batteries has its own ground here. And so I'll make a bus bar tomorrow and go ahead and um, drill into the frame of the vehicle and I'll get these mounted up. And truth be told, a lot of people don't know, grounds is the main thing that will kill your install. So if you're gonna be doing stuff like this, just take pride in your work. Nothing has to be done super fast. And then that, that's when mistakes happen. So as long as you have a good rule of thumb, I need grounds, the correct amount of grounds. You can never have not enough grounds. Um, so I can go so far as adding another uh, zero gauge um, to each one of those batteries just to give me the for sure I got a great ground. So that's the reason why I'm running one lead for this bank, one lead for this bank. And truth be told, you don't have to do that. It was done by me because He's, he kept the, the original motor that came in this car. So I was really only able to get a 325 amp alternator. And that was plenty. I wanted a 350, 
but I wanted to make sure each bank got enough power because as we speak, we're getting lithium batteries built for these and they're gonna sit in the same spot. We're gonna run four ADMs. We're gonna run another one of these and then we're gonna run some teams in here. So um, some sundown teams. So like I said, this will get me by for right now, but I'm just letting you know, the wire and everything in here was done for a purpose. So let's check out the console in here. <clears throat> Never mind the carpet. Sorry about that, people. The carpet kit didn't come in, so I'm waiting on it any day now, Mr. UPS man. So um, once I get that in, I'll just slide the console back out. Go ahead and add the new carpet kit. That way I can put the seats and stuff back in. So this radio right here is the DMH C5500 and it's an NEX model. And man, this thing right here is the part. It does everything. You got Spotify, Pandora, um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Got the color change in there. This is one bad puppy, and this is a flat screen radio. So um, it's, it's the bigger model, it's like the eight inch. And I had to actually build a box behind this to keep um, the, that sits in there because the cable that comes with this radio, it's only like a, a foot long, if that. So I won't, um, have any issues with the, the actual brain of this radio, I, I made a box for it to sit in so they won't touch the magnets. Pretty intuitive, let's put it like that. So once I get the seat in, everything will be everything. And I just was looking for a nice clean look. And I think I got it. Now in the dash, I ran four, four inch PRV mid-ranges and two 3500 TIs. Um, they're also made by PRV and I'll pop it up on the screen so you can see that right now. So what you're looking at is a plate that I built and the plate houses two fours and two um, three inch tweeters. And like I said, I'm gonna pop it up again, check it out. I make those plates and those, man, that thing is a lifesaver. And the, it's phenomenal the way that thing sounds because you're getting all this sound just bouncing off the glass, just hitting you right in your face. And that's the reason why I ran separate amps so I can get in between on each one. Cause fours, they, if, you, if you tune them out right, they are very loud and they will play actually clean. So in the back pillars, <clears throat> I got your PRV um, six by nines, but also, I just made those back pillars, which are gonna house two fours and a tweet, and they're made by four, um, PRV as well. Let me show you. So these are the back pillars, the top parts. And these are gonna hold two fours. I gotta cut that out, but it just, um, like I say, people, I take pride in my work. I'm not the best on the planet, but I, I, I try and I try to do things like I want in my vehicle and give my customers the same product that I like. So I just got these to wrap and all this good stuff. Now this is custom, um, I made this out of fiberglass and some Bondo and all that good stuff. But this is what they look like, just plain Jane. And they sit up in the corner. Right here. And so seat goes back on and they sit right up in the top piece. So. So you're gonna have some fours right here tuned to a great frequency right around, you know what I'm saying, 120 hertz, just right there on you and it should be pretty loud. So 
I went with the, the PRV 6 by 9s um, back in the factory location, which when you let the top back, you really know they're there because this thing right here lets down. And truth be told, a lot of people say, I can't tell the difference when they're, when they're back there or not. Don't have them and then add them. You can tell the difference. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, I'm making the bottom piece as well. And I'm gonna have to, I'm putting the eight back in this bottom pillar. Hopefully it, um, they should be done with the, the, I got some new ones coming. I got some new ones coming, the back pieces, and it's already housed an eight to go back here. So I'll be able to put the seat and everything back in and they'll all be black. All these new door panels, they're gonna be black once it leaves here. And these are the factory ones. Um, my customer purchased some new ones and turn around. They got them stitched and hopefully they should be done by the end of the week. Well, which will be Sunday or Monday. Now, <clears throat> truth be told, um, I should be done with this within a week. I just made the custom fuse block panel up front. Um, we're gonna run lights and all that good stuff. I just need to make sure we're, we're fused up. So we have any issues, we won't have the smoke show. Hopefully they'll blow those first. So once I get done with this, I got a good buddy, Steve. I don't know if y'all seen my other video. Um, I did his K5 blazer. So Mr. Steve always likes to, we got a, a buddy of ours he likes to go after. And I think he gonna get them cause I'm putting two X, two X's in here, sundowns, um, a, a custom built box. I'm, I'm doing the deck in here. And we're also running the Sony, the 8100, the AX8100. And we keep those in stock, people. They run you around $5.99. And what it does is, um, it's a eight inch tablet face, 8.9, I'm sorry. And it's able to slide up and down. So you can get to your controls back here, people. So, but it looks the part and it's not a double damn body, it's a single damn body. And they can fit in certain cars. Now, the only thing I didn't like about this radio is that it didn't go side to side. Now, up and down, it does. Um, tilt, it does. But going side to side, not gonna happen. People, I appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you checking me out. Stay tuned, I got a lot more coming. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of thrilled that people are taking notice to more and more of my bills because I've gotten a numerous amount of phone calls from some very nice people. Um, Mr. Williams out of, let's say for instance, Mr. Williams out of Louisiana called me about a console he wants me to do for him for a C10 truck. And guess what, Mr. Williams? I'm gonna make that happen to you, for you. And it's gonna be $150 cheaper than the price I'm gonna get you. I sure do appreciate you tuning in. My name is BJ, we're from the 478. You have a great day.